Hey folks, Gregzilla here, and I'm trying a little bit of a different kind of video today. A couple of people here and there have been wondering if they can see a little bit more of an in-depth look at how I go about making paintings and backgrounds for videos, and I figured I can give that a try. So this video is just going to be basically a time-lapse of me doing a painting and talking about the process and my mindset while doing it, so I hope it'll be interesting. So the painting I did for this video is based on my favorite movie, Spirited Away. And I chose that subject because I posted a poll on my Patreon for my patrons to vote on what I should paint. I gave them a big list of a bunch of anime and Japanese animation subjects, and Spirited Away was the winner. So the first part was just setting up a really rough sketch, and that's the one part that I did not include in the actual recording, and that's because I just, I tend to have a lot of just really, really rough ideas that really aren't even worth showing at all. That's the messy part, that's the part that just takes a lot of trial and error. But once I get the rough sketch down to the idea, then I start going over with a cleaner sketch. So right here, this is where I'm outlining the details of the characters a little bit more. Once I got the initial setup, I, I wanted the setup to be uh, the character No-Face kind of imposingly looking down upon Chihiro, the main character, while Haku the dragon is wrapped around her to try and protect her. So I thought that was just kind of a cool idea, just a bunch of cool characters from this awesome movie all kind of in the same scene. I kind of mashed together a couple of different scenes from the movie. I used I used reference. I, used, I looked at references for the characters and the background and stuff, and I just kind of picked the one, one scene that No Face was really prominent in, and then I kind of inserted Chihiro and Haku into it to make it just a just kind of a celebration of the movie as a whole. So anyway, yeah, this part is just basically speaks for itself. It's just adding all the details over the rough, rough sketch. Because the details are what is going to make the painting process a lot easier. If I went into the painting segment without having this outline first, that would make the painting a lot less uh, guided. It would make it a lot harder to get the details down. And there's no reason you can't do it that way, but for my, uh, my process for pictures like this, I want to have a pretty clean outline to work from just so I can make it look nice and rendered. So then I move on to adding a very simple background. This isn't going to be the final version of the background. It's going to, I'm going to come back to it later and add some a little bit more details. But for now, I just wanted to get the basic colors down for the background, just so I have something to base my colors for the characters off of. And I always do that. I always do the background colors first, because that's how I can interpret how the characters are going to look with their colors in the world that they're in in the picture. Because if I did the characters first, and then I did the background after, chances are they wouldn't look right. They wouldn't look like they belong in that lighting or coloring setup. So I always do background first. I'm not sure if that's how everybody does it, but that's how I do it. I always do background first. And then I move on to just giving the characters just their own little, like, basic colors first. I don't get right into all the details. I just put the flat colors of, like, each segment of their of their character design. So, like, how No Face has his his black goopy skin and then his white mask and his brown hair and his white teeth, red mouth, and Haku and Chihiro have their own different segments too. Just keeping all those separate segments just so I can keep it clean and uh, basic. And then I move on to adding the details, like I am here with no face. I'm adding his shading now. And I'm basing his shading mostly off of the, the film itself, just kind of simple, just a couple of different tones, not super crazy or detailed or anything. Because the more refined details come later, those are going to come after I have the basic colors and shading of the characters down. So yeah, now I'm just adding like the basic lighting, just a few highlights here and there to make No Face really pop. To make it look like, and he's supposed to look liquidy, like he's made of this really gross goopy substance, which is a lot of fun. So I add a lot of highlights to try and make it look like he's kind of reflecting the surfaces around him. And then here I'm going into his mask to make it look a little bit more lit and his his mask is different because it's like more of a matte surface whereas his body is totally liquid so that adds a little bit of different shading techniques in there uh, here i'm darkening his teeth a bit to make him look a little bit less like they pop out because you want the contrast to be on the focus of the image and his teeth are not the focus so you want them to um not pop out quite as much as no faces face is no his no face <clears throat> Anyway, yeah, so you want the you want your contrast and like your most like extreme color differences to be in the focus of the picture. And this picture doesn't necessarily have just one focus, but it has like a general area of focus, which is just uh, no face leaning his face into Chihiro and Haku in that whole little segment off to the left. And so I want more details in that general area as opposed to off to the right where his body is kind of glooping off into the into the right. 
And so then I added some detail to his gold that he's holding and he's offering to Chihiro. Because that, that's a lot of fun, add, adding like texture to the gold that makes it look really cool. And then here I'm making his lighting a little bit more yellow to make it fit in with the background better. And really trying to... I, I went a few different passes on this. As you can see, I kind of went back and forth trying to get the lighting to look right. Because sometimes I went too extreme, sometimes I didn't go extreme enough. And so basically I just... I wanted it to look more liquidy. So I made it a little bit more swirly, like a, like on that little lump that I just did. There's a there's a lot more like swirly shapes and circles that show like little f flickers of lights bouncing through him, and that made it look a lot more wet and goopy and gloopy and soggy. That looks that's a lot of fun. <laughs> and then going in now, I'm get, putting a little bit more detail into his mouth area and teeth in just all his different spots of detail, just to make it look more complete. Add a little bit more shading onto his knee because that's popping out a little bit more. Adding some... His, his hair is pretty hard. Hair is not my forte in, when it comes to painting. It, the hair is difficult. And so I added just a lot of different versions of his hair as the painting went on. And there I actually... If you can see, I can add, I added a little bit of goop uh, slim, like slipping through the, the gold cracks. And then I added some more detail on the gold specks falling through his fingers to make it look like he just has a lot that are falling through. And then moving on to Haku, the dragon, now it's getting just um, trying to get all his details worked out, trying to mask his line art. And oh, also I forgot to mention that I have the, um, the characters on separate layers. So No Face is his own layer, and then Haku Uchihiro, since they're kind of wrapped together, they're their own layer. But as the project goes on, I kind of merge them all together just so I can paint them better. I like... Working personally, I like working with as few layers as possible because I feel like that makes it feel more painterly in a way. I like having it feel kind of traditional. I don't like having a million layers for a million different elements. But, um, so sometimes I'll just do an entire painting on one layer just because I feel like that's fun. But for this, this is a little bit more complicated than stuff I usually do. So I worked with in several layers with the different characters and then I kind of flattened them down a bit as the project goes on later. But um, yeah, not too much to talk about with Haku there. He's just kind of the general painting uh, style. I added some shading to his hair, some shading to his body. I made it... Uh, if anything, I think the lighting scheme in this painting is a little bit vague. I, that's kind of one of my weaknesses too. But I, I made it so that um, he gets a little bit darker to the left and his uh, most bright spots are kind of at his face and then in the spot where no face is right there he's kind of i tried to make it look like no face was kind of casting a shadow onto him so like right under no face's face which still sounds really weird to say it's um it's darker down there and then chihiro herself is pretty bright within him cuz she's got to be a focus too and then here i'm going adding some some green lights some highlights on his hair to make it look like it's really more 3d and poofy I really, I really like uh, Haku's color scheme. It's really cool. So that was that was really fun to paint with. Then I'm going in and cleaning up his outlines and stuff because I'm painting over his uh, his black outline at this point. So I'm trying to use the paint to kind of smear through it and get rid of the black outline as I go. And I think that's a good way to do it. So like paint paint underneath the black outline for the basic colors. And then once you're farther along with the details, then you can start painting over the black outlines so that you can make it look more like a painting and less like a cartoon. That's generally my approach to it, at least. I think that's a good way to approach it. It's fun. Then I'm adding a little bit more dark shading to the, the side of him. Yeah, there, that makes it look a lot better right there when I went and make made his, uh, his tail butt a lot darker than before. So now he look he looks a little bit more 3D now. I think that that helped a lot. Cuz there was definitely some points in this painting where I wasn't sure exactly how the how the colors were working and how I could make it look better. So I think just a matter of making um more differences in light and dark in certain spots helped a lot. And now I'm going on to Chihiro who um I had to use a lot of different references of pictures to get her clothes right because there was very few, like in Google Images search, there's a lot of, there's very few good images of how like the white wrappings around her shoulder were, and also like the white spot on her hips. And so I couldn't really tell exactly what her clothes were doing, but I think, I think it came out all right, <laughs> but I had to fudge it a little bit. But yeah, now I'm just kind of going through with her, adding some brighter and darker spots to her clothes, adding more scale detail on Haku. 
So yeah, just adding those like spots of light to make it look like he has texture to his skin. But as you as you can tell, like I didn't put too much detail on his like butt area because I didn't want that to be the the main draw to the eye. I wanted uh, his face to be the draw. So that's where um and even even then hit that's the draw of Haku, but that's not the draw of the painting. Just kind of just kind of the triangle that Haku and No Face and Chihiro make is the draw in general. But anyway, now I'm going through and really just messing with colors in the entire thing. And it's just because uh, I felt like once once I got all the details down, I wanted to just mess with the colors and see if I can get a cooler uh, general vibe to it. And then I add some glow to the gold to make it look shinier. Then uh, I want because I wanted to make sure the values of all the characters really popped out from the background while also not looking like they're totally separate from it. And that's a hard balance to reach, but Photoshop has a lot of different uh, color adjustments and like different layer types that you can really play around with it. So there's a couple times where I made it black and white just to kind of show how that happens, just to check the values and make sure they pop good. And then that is pretty much it. That is my basic process for how I make a painting. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for voting on this painting as well as being super supportive and helpful in general. If you want to help me make more videos, you can head on over to patreon.com slash gregzilla. And you can get all sorts of rewards and behind-the-scenes content every week for just $1 a month. It is a huge help and I really appreciate it. And also, if I get around to making more of these painting videos, uh, my patrons actually get to see these two weeks before I post them to YouTube. So just a little added bonus for my Patreon pals. But anyways, I hope this was interesting and I hope I didn't get too rambling there. But if you liked it and you want to see more videos like this, I can definitely do that. Just let me know in the comments if it's something that you'd want to see more of in the future. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.